Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So logarithmic regression is one of the things we like to use on this channel, because essentially within the cryptocurrency asset class, what we've seen happen with Bitcoin and a number of other cryptocurrencies is that they experience the most explosive growth early on and then it slowly deteriorates over time in the in the rate at which it can grow now that of course does not mean there's not a lot of money to be made in crypto as i've said before the gains in ethereum and bitcoin as well as a lot of other cryptocurrencies, even if they are not doing as well as maybe they did the last cycle, they're still far superior than most other asset classes out there. So you just have to consider that, okay? For instance, last, last market cycle, we saw Ethereum go from like less than 50 cents to $1,400, okay? And, and to give you an idea of, of what this would have looked like, I mean, this was uh, a four, over a 400,000% gain. 400,000%. To, to give you an idea of what that would have to look like today to see another 400,000% gain, look to see how high the price of Ethereum would have to go. In fact, we would have to go to over $300,000. Now, I don't even think Bitcoin's gonna make it to $300,000 this year. So the idea that Ethereum is going to, or, or say even next year either. So the idea that Ethereum would, would put in similar gains as before, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And one of the ways we, we, we did, you know, look at this and try to understand it better is by using these logarithmic regression curves. And if you're unfamiliar with these, all it is is it's y equals 10 times a ln of x minus b. Okay, this is all it is, where x is the number of days and a and b are fitted coefficients. Now, this was what we used during the bear market. Okay, this is the logarithmic regression band that we use during the bear market, which is only fit to quote unquote non-bubble data. It's not fit to the to the data once you're really going up and, and making a nice a nice run. It's not fit to any of this data. It's not fit to this either. Okay. Now the non the the time that we spent in this band was the best time to accumulate Ethereum this cycle. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that it's still not a good investment. It just means that the best time to accumulate Ethereum this market cycle was back over here. And when we were over here at that point, we made a video on the channel called Ethereum, the accumulation phase of a lifetime. And then here we said Ethereum, the reaccumulation phase of a lifetime. And then here we said Ethereum, the overvaluation reaccumulation phase of a lifetime. But the whole idea is that Ethereum still has a ways to go. While it might not be as great of an opportunity to accumulate it today as it was a year and a half ago, it still doesn't mean that it's not a good investment. Okay, and this is not financial advice, of course, but it does not mean that it's not, uh, it doesn't mean that it's not a good investment, even if it's beyond the, you know, these other regression bands. Now, if we go look at, say, the Ethereum regression rainbow, which also shows a lot of other regression bands, we could try to start to understand what are theoretical possibilities. I would assume that we would not make it to the upper regression band because Bitcoin has been unable to make it to its prior regression bands from each cycle. So every cycle, Bitcoin is unable to make it to the regression band it, that it was in the prior cycle. So we might assume that Ethereum would do the same thing. Now, I often said back over here that I think at the very least, we should be able to make it to the top of the purple regression band this cycle. We might even be able to make it up to this one, you know, up one more, just one, one below this one. This one really extended up, up into a, a second one up here that's not drawn. You can see the wick. So theoretically, you know, you can imagine one more drawn up here that I can't really draw it, but you can imagine one more drawn up here, which is where this one ultimately went. And, and if it were to end up dropping down two regression bands for the next market cycle peak, if it ends up, you know, if it follows something like that, and we'd be looking at uh, one, two. So this one is theoretically a possibility based on, on, on what we saw with Bitcoin. If that's the case, then the lower bound on this, if I pull it up here, the lower bound currently today is at 7,146. And then the upper bound is at 13,164. Now remember, you might not like those numbers, but 
these are monotonically increasing functions, right? I mean, they're, they're gonna continue to increase every single day. So that's why I often say, you know, time is on our side, right? That's, I, I always say that, I say time is on our side, is because I ultimately think that the market cycle has a ways to go. And the longer we just sort of bide our time, I believe the higher we can ultimately fly, not necessarily because we are, you know, allowing more people time to accumulate, but because we've looked at these types of charts right here and we say, all right, well, I mean, the longer we take, the higher these bands get. And maybe that can provide some insight into how high Ethereum will go before having, before having a substantial pullback. So this is something, you know, to continue, you know, I, I think it's worth considering to look at with regards to Ethereum. I, I certainly do not think that 4,400 was the market cycle peak. As I've said before, I think we're in one of these phases like we saw back over here. And by the way, we said this before it even happened. If you guys remember back in April and May, I said, guys, expect a lull coming up here in the summer. Once we were in the summer, I said, I still don't really see any major breakouts even through, on, through beyond Q3. Now that we're in Q4, now that we're in Q4, you know, could we break out? Well, let's look, I mean, let's look at these other moves really quick. So these were these prior range bound areas for Ethereum. Okay, so we spent a while, we had short term peak number one, so local top, local top, and then blast off number three, local top, local top, and then blast off was number three. And then so far, if we look at this one, and then draw our you know, lines in the sand, if you will, we had local top, local top, and then wherever three is, I imagine that would be blast off. So what this means for me is that the next time Ethereum goes to $4,000, I don't think it's going to stop there. Okay. Now I'm not saying it's going to go there next week. I'm not going to even say it's going to go there next month, but whenever it makes it back to 4,000, I think that will be the time where we break higher. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for. I don't really care if we go down to, you know, if we go back down to 3,000 before that happens, even if we go back down to 2,000 before that happens, or if we just stay here and go higher. The point is to say, the next time that Ethereum goes to $4,000, I believe that will be time for, that'll be game time, okay? Right now, we're talking about practice, right? We're not talking about the game, we're talking about practice. And we're not in game time, right? We're not at the game yet. We'll get there. I do believe we will get there, but we're not there yet. We need a little bit more time. Um, and ultimately, I think when we look back on this on, on this sort of phase that we're in right now, it'll be uh, very obvious that it was just a long reaccumulation phase, even if it means, you know, I mean, this is sort of the more bearish cases, you know, all the way up to the top, all the way back down, up all the way to the top, and then back to the top, but then ultimately back down. So this one actually had sort of like a, I mean, this one didn't quite make it all the way back up, that would be a more bearish case where it, you know, it, it maybe comes back up and still doesn't break it and then comes back down and then finally goes through. But my, again, my speculation is the next time Ethereum breaks $4,000, like the next time we break 4,000, I would, I would lean towards the side of, of, of the bulls are in control, right? They're like the bulls are in control at that point if we're able to break it. And let's say break it on a weekly close. Let's not say like a, a wick or anything. No one really cares about wicks. But if we're putting a weekly close, above four thousand dollars then i think it's probably it's probably time to put on your seatbelts now right now we are in october right it's october 3rd and we know historically speaking that ethereum breaks out a lot of times in q1 sometimes though we've seen ethereum break out before q1 right we've seen it break out in december as well um so you know my, my timeline at this point is is you know if it breaks out in October, November, December, I don't really care. My speculation is that we need at least a few more weeks. Like we're, we're probably not gonna be breaking 4,000 a week from now, um, but it's irrelevant, right? It's all, it's all just noise. No one's getting out of bed for a $3,800 Ethereum. No one's getting out of bed for a $2,800 Ethereum. My opinion again, is just that it's long reaccumulation. And, and if you, you know, if you want a position in Ethereum, you've, you're, you're getting plenty of time to, you know, to get one, okay? So that's sort of what I see. Uh, that's where I see Ethereum right now. I do think we're, we're gearing up later on for another, another breakout, but we need a little bit more time to get there. We also do have the Into the Cryptoverse NFT. If you go to nft.intothecryptoverse.com and you scroll down to this one, uh, this is the first one of this collection and it's called Hodling. You can see the whole idea, right? This was launched in September is, you know, sometimes you get these red candles uh, like we did in September, but 
ultimately, sometimes you just gotta play chess and and hodl, right? And 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 stuff. Forget about it, right? Just forget about it, and and focus on other things. And you know, one day Ethereum will will come through in the clutch again. But this is the way it works. You know, sometimes you just have to do something else for a while, and and that gets you through the summer lulls. It gets you through whatever, right? It gets you through bloody Septembers. Um, it's just the idea, right? So make sure you guys make sure you guys check it out. Uh, the artwork for this was created by Luke Dillon. I would encourage you guys to follow him if you like this artwork because we have more pieces from this collection coming soon. And I will link his Instagram in the description below as well. But if you want to get one of these, this, the, 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 they're only going to be sold for one more day after the launch of this video. Less than a day, really. Because by 12 p.m. Eastern on Monday, we're going to burn however many, whichever ones are not sold. So if you want to, if you want to get one, make sure you grab one. If NFTs aren't your thing, completely understand. Uh, but anyways, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel at the very least. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Bye.